God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Many of you may be familiar with those words as they have been called throughout the years, the serenity prayer, originally being published as they are now in 1943 by a guy by the name of Reinhold Niebauer. This is often used in many of the 12-step programs like Alcoholics Anonymous, and it is one of those words, prayers of encouragement. We do have possible ties as far back as the 12th and 13th century with St. Francis of Assisi. But again, really it doesn't matter who the author was. Because we know these words of comfort, even if we've not prayed these words directly, we've heard these words before. We've heard them echo from our hearts in our prayers to God. We've heard other people echo these words, knowing that there are things that are out of our control. Things that are out of our ability to do. Things that are hard to accept at times. Think about it. Perhaps in this last week you've had an, an opportunity to maybe not pray these words, but pray words such as these. Maybe in the last, maybe not the last week, but the last month. As, you, as we get ready for Christmas, it seems like there's so much more going on. Even if it's just we go in, making it to worship, times like that. There is extra service to, to go to. There's extra, extra things to do around the house. And so we know that there are times where we feel a bit overwhelmed. Perhaps, though, that's not exactly what this prayer gets at, is it? It's accepting those things that we cannot change. Knowing that there are those things that we can't change. Not just about the burdens we have, but that there, those burdens are so much so that we can't stop them. Sometimes as we look forward to opportunities we have, we don't see them as opportunities. Perhaps facing a son or daughter, a grandson or a granddaughter, it, to correct them in something they're doing wrong. This is not something we look forward to because it's, we don't know how they'll respond. Speaking to a spouse... And saying we were going to use that money for Christmas and now we've used it for something else. Perhaps it's getting back that medical diagnosis that came back positive when you were hoping for a negative. As you think about it, I'm sure there are things that are outside of your control. And we don't like that as people of God, even as people in general, I should say. We don't like things to be out of our control. We like to have things in our well within hand. Because when it's out of our control, we, we struggle, don't we, a little bit? We struggle with seeing that there's starving people, bloodthirsty dictators, a market that can't keep up. We struggle with the very fact that there are things that we cannot, that we cannot do to help those we love from going to see the Lord. And I think in particular, in this Advent season, Thanksgiving and Christmas, we have a time that people where we will have lifted hearts with joy. There are those who are remembering the loved ones who will not be joining them, whose hearts are heavy, who are overcome with sadness. There are those who, who, instead of looking forward to the holiday joy they once did, that Christmas celebration, they, they only know that this year it won't be with that good friend, that loving relative. And we all have been through this. It's not just a unique Christian thing, but it, in general, we have experienced the pain of loss. We've experienced the loss of a loved one, those we care about, and it makes it hard to go into this season with such joy. And that's what Isaiah, though, invites us to do today. Isaiah actually invites us to, to face these things and to accept them. To accept them? How can that be easy? How can that be a gift? But Isaiah here, he, he actually invites us to, to look at these things as not, not the burdens that they, that they have become, but to see them as God's work in our lives. And as we look at our lessons today, not just Isaiah, but Mark, and we look at Peter, we see that it's not just acceptance of the things in our lives, but God gives us two other things. The acceptance that he has for each one of us through the cross. And the acceptance of God for each one of the people who hear the good news message. The acceptance of sharing his gospel message with others. And maybe we would like to insert here for our first, for this first part of the gift, is that, that idea of trust. Because ultimately, where does acceptance of God's will come from in our lives? Does it come from our hearts? Does it come from our minds? Does it come from, from our lives? Well, no. It comes from God. 
It comes from the Holy Spirit working on us. It comes from accepting that there are things outside of our control, but that there is nothing, nothing outside of God's control. And not only is there nothing outside of God's control, but He will work those things which we take as bad to be good. Romans 8.28, as many of you are familiar, He will work all things to the good of those who love Him. Paul then again reassures us also in Ephesians chapter 1, In Him we were also chosen having been predestined according to the plan of Him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of His will. Everything works out according to God's will in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the, pra- for the praise of His glory. Even in those things that are out of our control, out of our acceptance, God invites us to praise Him, to know that His plan is greater, to know that His hand is gr- in, that He is in control that we are not facing the troubles and the trials of this life willy-nilly, whimsically, but that He has a plan. And at times we do struggle with this, don't we? Because we're not ready. We're not ready to lose a loved one. We're not ready to hear that diagnosis. We're not ready to, to know that our son or our daughter has, that they've done that thing that we don't even like to talk about. But God... He's with us through those things. He's with us through those things and He gives us the ability to accept those things in our lives. Those things that He has allowed, that He has placed in our lives. He gives us those things so that we will know His power. So that we will know His glory because they are out of our control. That's why we don't pray, God, give me the ability to accept these things. But God, give me the serenity to accept these things. God, give me the peace of mind to know that your will is greater. God, give me the peace of mind to know that this is not just a random set of events. But you, your hand guides and directs each and every day. But then we get back to that trust thing, don't we? We get back to that struggle that we each wrestle with. That struggle of trusting completely in God's will. Trusting completely that His time is right. And that trust, that distrust, well, it leads ultimately to pride. It leads to pride in our hearts saying, Lord, I know better than You. I would have done it this way if I was God. I would not have done it now. I would have done it later. I would have made sure this happened. Has that ever been... Something that's crossed your mind. As you looked at the things in your life, has there been a time where you said, God, I really would have rather you did it this way? Well, I don't know about you, but I know in my life there have been times where I thought I knew better than God. And even though I thought that, I was wrong. And that ultimately comes from my sinful human pride. When we think we know better than God, we know that it is our sinful human pride. Because we know that our God, not only is He in control of all things, but He is a God of love. He is a God of mercy. He is a God who cares intimately about each one of us. Even enough to know how many or how few hairs we have on our heads. Even to take the time to design each of our cells to do different functions in our body. Our God took time for each one of us And to think that we know better than Him. That's sin. That's sin. When we think that we're somehow able to control things. But God didn't count. He didn't count on our faithfulness. He didn't count on us to be constantly trusting Him. He didn't count on us to always be those faithful Christians. Because if He had, He knows that we would fail. He knew that we would fail even before even before we realized it. And so He had a plan. He had a plan in place already before the creation of the world. He had a plan in place to send His own Son, Christ Jesus. And that is the second gift of acceptance that we have. That gift that God, not our acceptance, but that God has accepted us That He has accepted us as sinful human beings. That He has accepted us as people who have not kept His law perfectly. Who have violated His law time and time again. That He has still seen beyond that. To see beyond the unacceptable sinful lives we led. And 
and instead see us as acceptable children through the cross of Christ. Acceptable children made acceptable by the precious blood of Christ. What a beautiful message that is. Not just in the Advent season, but throughout the year. This message that God has accepted us. This message that He has chosen us. That He has picked us to be His own. That He exchanged His very own Son to take our place. When Jesus came in a manger, when He lived the perfect life, when He died the perfect death and was buried and rose again, He did not do so just as a man. He did so as both God and as man. The Lord Almighty gave His own life for you and for me. The Lord Almighty sacrificed Himself so that we would know that we were His. That we were not just somebody's, but we were His. The peace of the world is fleeting. The comfort of the world is passing. But the peace of the passion and the comfort of the cross is forever. It is the hope that we have throughout this Advent season. It is the hope that, that, that not just that we will be accepted, but we have been accepted. That we have been accepted. And you might struggle with that because you do, like me, live sinful lives on this earth, don't you? But that's why we talk about being both a sinner and a saint at the same time. Because from the very day of your baptism, you were made a saint. You were accepted by God from now until eternity. And so as we wrestle with those things each and every day, though, we know where we are going. We know the hope of salvation. And we know the peace that comes with it. And there are those who don't know that hope. There are those who don't know that peace, those, those who don't know that God, what God has done for them. And that's unacceptable. It's unacceptable because we live in a day and age where every person should be able to hear the gospel message. Every person should be able to know with full assurance the promise of salvation. It's unacceptable to think there are still those, though, who have not heard the good news the promise of hope and salvation, that have not heard the news that Christ accepts them no matter how old or how young, no matter how many sins they've committed or how few or how great, that because of the cross, that invitation of acceptance is there for them as well. And that's the third gift of acceptance. The third gift of acceptance that God, that He hasn't closed the gates to heaven, that He hasn't shut the doors yet, but He has... He is still waiting with open arms to bring in all people. To bring those who do not yet know Him. To bring in those who still tremble in fear. Those who live apathetically thinking there's no heaven or no hell. That He still has that invitation available. And that He has invited us to take part in it. See, that that acceptance... See, it runs all the way through. That Those three gifts, they run together, actually. Because when we see God working in our lives, when we trust that God is working in our lives, then we know for certain of our salvation. And we are willing to share it. Not forced to share it. Not told to share it, but invited to share it. We're invited to walk in John the Baptist's sandals. To prepare the way. As our hymn said, to prepare the royal highway, making flat every mountain, lifting up every valley, taking away the obstacles that have come in the way of people, knowing the promise that came at the manger, the promise of salvation that came at the cross, the obstacles that come in the way of people knowing the promise that life eternal is yet to come, that our God is coming in all His glory. And so as we unwrap the second present as we await Christ coming in eager eager anticipation. We also with joy unwrap the second present of acceptance. Most importantly, that God has accepted us as His children. May this be the peace, the hope that carries us through not only this Advent season, but, but as we go through each day knowing, knowing that we are the children of God, knowing the promises for us, that the pain and the suffering of this world is temporary. The hunger and thirst we feel in this world 
will come to an end. Because our Lord, when He comes in His glory, will invite us to come, drink of those holy waters, that we may never thirst or hunger anymore. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. And Lord, we pray that you would give us guidance each day as we go through this Advent season. Fill our hearts with the sure hope, the sure hope of salvation, that we will one day be with you, not in suffering and pain, not in tears and sadness, but in joy, united as the whole people of God before your heavenly throne, filled up and made whole. Lord, may you fill each of us now, that we may know that you have accepted us to be your children. May you guide us that we may know your will is greater than our own. May you guide us that we may go forth to share that good news word, that good news that Christ is waiting, that he, his arms are wide open, and that he invites all of us, no matter where we are in this life, to come to him. This we pray in Christ Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen.